If you're noticing small growths on your face or your body, they might be skin tags. So let's talk about what causes them and how you can get rid of them. Hey, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Northern California, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I wanted to make a video on skin tags because when I'm performing full body skin exams, looking for skin cancer on my patients, one of the things I come across a lot are skin tags and patients often have questions about them. Like why am I getting these? And do I need to get them removed? Are they harmful? So I wanted to answer all of those questions today. Skin tags are small non-cancerous or benign growths that appear on the skin over time. And they can really range in size from as small as one millimeter all the way up to a couple of centimeters. And they can sort of dangle off of the skin from a small stalk, or they can be firmly fixed to the skin surface. Most commonly, they will be the same color as your skin, but occasionally they can be a bit darker or even pink. And because some of these hang or dangle off of the skin, they are more prone than other types of skin growths to getting irritated. And when they become irritated, they can become pink or red, and they can also become tender because typically skin tags are asymptomatic. And rarely if they get caught on something like jewelry or your clothing, they can bleed as well. And that's usually when people are the most alarmed by them. The most common places that I see them and where they tend to occur are on the eyelids or around the eyes, as well as in areas of skin folds. And this can include the armpits or the underarm area, as well as neck creases under the breasts and in the groin. You may also notice them where you tend to get chronic rubbing of your clothing or your jewelry. Most dermatologists can very readily identify a skin tag on someone, but there are certain harmless growths that can mimic skin tags, something called seborrheic keratoses. Also, you can have skin colored moles that can mimic a skin tag, as well as certain skin infections like warts or molluscum. Rarely even I have seen skin cancers that mimic skin tags, which is why you shouldn't treat your skin tags at home. And we'll get into that. When we think about the causes of skin tags, the number one cause is genetics. So you can sort of be genetically predisposed to developing these growths. Also, because these tags tend to develop where the skin rubs together, they are more common in people who are overweight or have excess body fat. The development of skin tags has also been linked to insulin resistance. So if you have diabetes or prediabetes, you are also much more likely to have skin tags. And lastly, we do tend to see skin tags crop up during pregnancy, just one of the many fun skin changes that happens during that time in your life. And that's thought to be due to the shifting hormones during that period, as well as the weight gain and friction. The interesting things about skin tags that develop during pregnancy is that some of them may regress or completely disappear postpartum. So that's what skin tags are. That's how they develop. Let's talk about ways to remove them. First of all, you don't have to remove your skin tags because they are benign or non-cancerous. There's no reason to get them removed if they're not bothering you. And although I mentioned with pregnancy and postpartum, sometimes skin tags can go away. Typically they will not resolve on their own. Reasons to get skin tags evaluated or removed would be if they are changing in any way. So the size, the shape, the color, they've become symptomatic or irritated, or if they bother you cosmetically. And I do really want to emphasize the importance of not removing your skin tags at home. And there's kind of two main reasons for this. Number one, some skin tags can have a very robust blood supply. So if you were to try and cut it off at home or tie it off and reduce that blood supply, you could end up with a bleeding complication or an infection from at home removal. So I know as a dermatologist, I'm telling you not to treat your skin tags at home. And please, please, please do not be tempted by what you see on like TikTok or Instagram for these at home solutions, the little skin tag zappers or things that strangle your skin tags or using wart remover, for example. Yes, these can cause serious damage to the skin and you might get rid of a skin tag, but you're also at risk of causing an infection, permanent skin damage, or worse, removing a skin tag that's not actually a skin tag that can cause harm down the line. And number two, and I think this is the most important is that skin tags are not always as they appear. So you might have something dangling off your skin. It looks like a harmless skin tag, but it could actually be a skin cancer or an infection. And it's really important to have that evaluated by a professional before any intervention is performed. I very distinctly remember from my training, one of my attending, so supervising dermatologists told us about this story because we were treating skin tags in the clinic about a patient she had who had what seemed to be a pretty obvious skin tag in the groin region, but it was a little bit bigger than their average skin tag. So instead of freezing it off or burning it off, which are things I'm going to talk about soon, she decided to cut it off or remove it. Anytime you cut something off in the clinic, you send it to pathology to be evaluated under a microscope to make sure that it is just a skin tag and nothing else. And thank goodness she did because it was a melanoma, which honestly is 
terrifying. And she tells this story to dermatologists she's training as a really good example of why any time a dermatologist is cutting something off of the body or removing it, it needs to be evaluated by a dermatopathologist. We always say, don't throw tissue in the trash. If this gentleman had not gotten this evaluated by a dermatologist and had instead tried to remove it at home, he could have cut off this melanoma, gone about his life, and then showed up with metastatic or deadly melanoma years down the line, not knowing that it was something that could have been treated or addressed much earlier. So let's talk about the different treatments you can do in the office to have a skin tag addressed. And the number one thing you can do is have it cut off or surgically removed. We typically choose to do this for larger skin tags or for lesions that we are fairly certain are a skin tag, but might have unusual features that we need to get evaluated. The way this is typically performed is a numbing agent like lidocaine is injected into the skin, so you don't really feel anything. And then scissors or a blade are used to remove it, and then bleeding is controlled in the office. Skin tag removals tend to heal very well. There's always a chance of scarring anytime you're removing anything from the skin, but they tend to do great. Probably the most common area that I cut skin tags off of my patients is on the eyelid area. Those are areas where we typically don't like to burn or freeze things off, so surgical removal is preferred. But let's talk about burning and freezing because those are the most common ways that skin tags are addressed in a clinic. So first off, freezing, which in dermatology we call cryosurgery. This involves using liquid nitrogen to freeze the skin tag. This typically works best for small skin tags or skin tags that have a very thin stalk. When you freeze the skin tag, it not only cuts off the blood supply, but it also destroys the base of that tag. And then typically about a week later, it will just fall off. This is a really great solution if people have lots of very small skin tags in their armpits, for example. Having things frozen off is a bit uncomfortable, but it's not so uncomfortable that we need to numb someone before we do it. And then in contrast to cryosurgery or freezing something off, you can also burn skin tags off and that's called electro desiccation. With electro desiccation, we are essentially using heat or a small amount of electricity to zap or burn the skin tag and destroy it. Once that skin tag is burned, it will typically fall off in a few days. I tend to prefer using electrocautery or burning skin tags off in my patients who have deeper skin tones. The issue that happens with cryosurgery or freezing things off is that really cold temperatures can be toxic or deadly to melanocytes, the pigment producing cells. So if someone has a deeper skin tone and you freeze them, there's a much higher risk of causing irregular pigmentation there. I also really like electro desiccation if someone has very tiny, tiny skin tags, especially on the neck area, because you can be very, very precise with that modality. I should also mention that the treatment of skin tags sometimes is covered by insurance and sometimes it's not. So if you have a single or a few skin tags that are irritated, bleeding, are obviously inflamed, that's going to go through insurance because it's causing a medical problem for the patient. However, if you just have unsightly skin tags on the neck or the face that you want treated, that's considered cosmetic and doesn't go through insurance. And once a skin tag is treated, it typically is gone forever. Now, it doesn't prevent you from growing additional skin tags in the future. So if you have ongoing insulin resistance, for example, diabetes, you may develop new skin tags in the future, but then we just treat them as they come if they're bothersome. I'm curious, do you have skin tags? Share your experience in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.